as you can see in the background, I've got my big bags of perlite and vermiculite out. Today I was actually making up some potting mix for up potting my plants down in the grow room. That's gonna be another video. But today I wanted to take the time to talk about the difference between perlite and vermiculite and the pros and cons of both. So let's go. So it is way later in the day than when I filmed that first shot there. It got real windy on me as we had a cold front moving through and it's still moving through because it's pretty chilly, but tomorrow it's supposed to be gorgeous, it's supposed to be in like the 60s. So uh, I'll take a little wind for a little bit of uh, a little bit of warm weather. It's a fair trade, I guess. But uh, anyways, that's why we're out here later because I was not going to fight the wind. It just was pointless to do so. So I'm out here talking about the difference between perlite and vermiculite. One of the biggest reasons why I wanna talk about this is because I see so many misconceptions around them and I see a great soil additive, but because of the lack of knowledge around them, they're being misused, causing a lack of, uh, or causing a lot of wasted time and wasted money that I just hate to see because then people don't use them and then they, uh, you know, they discount the actual applications of them because they've had a bad experience with them. So what I wanna talk about is perlite and vermiculite. The first thing that I want to talk about, the first misconception, before I get into some of the uses and applications that I use them for, because they do have a use and application that are going to help you and really improve uh, you as a gardener and, and just make your life a lot easier as well. The first misconception I want to talk about is that they are not interchangeable. These are both expanded volcanic rock. So you'd expect them to be like apples to apples, right? not a fair comparison at all because this is like an apple and this is like a grapefruit. Not the same thing. They are both expanded volcanic rock, but they are two completely different types of expanded volcanic rock. One is very uh, airy and um, porous. The other one is very, uh, very airy, but not very porous. One absorbs water, one doesn't. One holds on to, uh, or one aerates the soil, one doesn't. Um, so they're two very different things with different applications. Um, so that's the first thing that I want to get out of the way because uh, they are not interchangeable. The second biggest misconception that I want to cover is that they are soil amendments. These are not soil amendments. I know they are sold as soil amendments. I know the industry calls them soil amendments and I wish the industry would stop calling them soil amendments. These do not amend soil. These amend potting mix, these amend seed starting mix, these do not amend soil. And the reason why I say that they do not amend soil is because I get 15, 20 people a week that are adding perlite to clay. You might even be adding perlite to clay. I don't know your situation, but all I know is that my inbox is filled with people running to perlite as their solution to fixing clay soil because they say, well, it says that it adds uh, aeration, it adds drainage, it should be really good for my clay, which does not have good aeration and it does not have good drainage, right? Wrong. That's because clay has a very tight particle structure. The thing is, clay has such a small particle size that it's actually bound by chemical bonds, believe it or not. Chemical bonds hold the clay together. So what you do, right, you take the perlite, you mix it in with the clay, and for a hot second, it's broken up and it's loose. And you say, aha, I fixed the problem. What happens? Well, the thing is, is nature sorts by density and particle size. The density and particle size of perlite is, the density is very low and the particle size is really big compared to clay, in comparison to clay. So what you have is you have a case in which it rains or you water, and what happens? You get perlite that floats to the surface and then the clay sinks to the bottom. The clay compacts down and the perlite just floats on the top of your surface. Then you have a big, a big layer of perlite and then a layer of clay, the clay compacts and then you, you're far worse off than you were in the beginning because now you got all this other perlite to deal with and it's blowing around when the wind blows and you're, you just got a giant mess in your hands. Not only that, but you wasted time and money. So why doesn't it work? Well, the reason why it doesn't work is because there's nothing in perlite to break up the clay. This does not break up clay. A lot of people think this breaks up clay just because when it's worked into their soil, it temporarily prevents the clay from compacting. 
What breaks up clay are the chemical compounds found in compost, humic acid, fulvic acid, um, the organic matter that break down and allow worms and fungi and bacteria to work the soil and, and actually till it naturally. That is what breaks up the chemical bonds found in clay. Also things like gypsum. Gypsum uh, has calcium that the calcium will actually go down and break up those chemical bonds found in clay. So the chemical bonds are like this, the calcium gets in between and they break up and then it becomes looser. I prefer using uh, compost because it has a lot of other nutrients that things like gypsum don't have. And this doesn't have anything in it. This is completely inert. This is just an expanded volcanic rock. There is nothing in this that will benefit. There's no nitrogen, there's no phosphorus, there's no potassium. There is not a zilch, nothing. So that's why if you add it to your clay, nothing happens. Um, so that's why I would never consider it a soil amendment. Similarly to this, a lot of people add this to their sandy soil because this absorbs moisture. This is true. However, what did we just talk about with the perlite? The same exact thing happens with the vermiculite. Vermiculite is very light and it has a very uh, large uh, soil or has a very large particle size compared to sand. This floats on top of the sand. Sure, it'll still hold on to moisture, but then what happens is you have got a layer of vermiculite that floated up to the surface and you got a layer of sand. The two just it's whatever. You're, you know, you're not actually fixing anything. And again, this has no nutrients in it. So there's no nitrogen, no phosphorus, no potassium. So what do we do to fix sandy soil? Compost. Compost has organic matter and it has humus, which acts like nature's sponge. It holds on to water just like vermiculite does, but it also will help to actually give soil structure that's not found in sand because it'll hold on to the air, it'll hold on to the water, and also has nutrients, which sand does not have. So again, those are the two fixes for actually amending soil. So you might be thinking to yourself, why on earth would you be talking about their uses? How are they beneficial? Because they're not soil amendments. They do have their applications, but not in amending soil. They amend mixes like seed starting mix and potting mix. And I'll give you the prime examples now, because now that we got those out of the way, those two common misconceptions, I wanna talk about what actually is their uses and where they thrive. So I first wanna talk about the most common one, which is perlite. So perlite is very loose. It adds a lot of drainage. It uh, increases aeration and it allows the roots to, uh, to just move throughout the soil better in, in a mix that has peat uh, or coconut coir, whatever your organic material is of choice. It could even be compost. Those things have a tendency to do what's called caking. Caking is when it dries out and, uh, and then it gets wet again. It dries out and gets wet. It dries out and gets wet. Well, what happens is those particles actually will compact over time. And even if it's great soil, they will compact. Um, and that causes caking, which can actually result in water being shed off the sides. You add perlite, it actually will, because the perlite does not expand or contract, it does not allow the soil to cake, meaning it holds a much fluffier structure, allowing for water to percolate through the soil. And uh, percolate's a big word. <laughs> you should know what it means. Percolate just means the ability for water to uh, go through the soil structure. Another thing that it's used for is it's used for uh, drainage. Um, this actually comes in multiple sizes. Perlite comes in fine, extra fine, medium, as well as coarse and extra coarse. For things like your, uh, for seed starting mix, I always recommend, and this is dampened by the way, because it is very dusty. That's one of the downsides of both vermiculite and perlite is that they're very dusty and that, can, that silica can get inside your, your lungs and it will really irritate your lungs. So always dampen it before you use it. But uh, you know, for seed starting mixes, I use extra fine because because it is, uh, it looks like snow, <laughs> um, because it does not disrupt the, the root development and it does not uh, disrupt the soil structure because it's so fine. You're working with fine soil, you're working with fine roots, you should have fine perlite. In potting mix, where you're looking to add that drainage, a lot of people use uh, things like pea gravel, river rock, things like that to add a base layer below their pot where water can drain out. One of the real nice things is to get like a coarse or an extra coarse perlite because pound for pound, this is way, way less weight than, um, than you uh, using like a river rock or a pea gravel. Um, this will add just as much drainage as a pea gravel, but it weighs like 
15 times less. So you're gonna actually benefit from that as well because your pots aren't going to be as heavy. So the next thing I wanna talk about is vermiculite. Vermiculite is its lesser known cousin because I just don't know why a lot of people don't talk about vermiculite, but it's an incredible soil additive and that's because it absorbs moisture really well. It actually holds on to the water because it's absorbent. That's really nice in a seed starting mix because seeds don't like to be dry. Well, really nothing likes to be dry, but especially your seeds that have fine roots. So you have uh, this, per or this vermiculite added to your seed starting mix. It's going to help reduce any watering stress that can happen. Another thing, another thing, Five minutes later. All right, so as I was saying before I was interrupted yet again, it's just one of those days. You gotta just have to laugh it off. At, at, some, at some point, you just have to laugh it off. So uh, what I was talking about is that this is commonly used in a seed starting mix to prevent against the, the sporadic water uh, and then no water, you know, moist and dry, moist and dry, moist and dry. Those inconsistencies can really stress a seedling out. So this just helps to kind of stabilize the growing medium and just provide that consistent moisture that the plant needs to remain stress-free. Another thing that it's used for is actually to uh, germinate small seeds. You see, vermiculite is a very incredible uh, sponge. It holds onto water so well. The, the surface area is massive on the uh, on the vermiculite here. So what it does is it holds on to moisture like a sponge, but not so much that it's, that it's saturated. You see, I put in about a gallon of water in here, and if I squeeze this, there's water just dripping out because I obviously oversaturated the soil to prevent any dust. But um, if you were to use this in a, uh, on the surface of a potting mix, a lot of times people have difficulty with small seeds like celery, herbs, carrots, what have you, not germinating properly because they use compost or potting mix or seed starting mix to cover those seeds up when they first start them. Well, it's really heavy when it's wet and sometimes the seeds can't poke up through. This is very, very lightweight. So it sets on top of the soil and you actually just sprinkle this on top of the seed starting mix when you plant your seeds and then the seeds have no problem poking up through it and it holds on to the moisture that seeds need to germinate well. So you get a better germination rate. And then the final thing that vermiculite is used for that really excels at is actually preventing fungus gnats. Um, compost is organic matter. Um, anything you have that, that is organic matter will actually attract fungus gnats to break down that organic matter. That's where they get their name. But when they're in the soil and they're breaking down that organic matter, whether it's compost, coconut coir, whatever you're using, they'll also snack on your plant roots. And that causes a lot of plant stress and can even cause your plants to die. So by adding this to the soil surface in about an eighth of an inch thick layer, the fungus gnats can't lay their eggs in the soil because it's very, very coarse. And so you'll have way less fungus gnats, meaning your, your plants will actually be healthier. So there you go, there are the key differences and, uh, and uses for perlite and vermiculite. I really hope you enjoyed, I hope you found this video to be informative, and I really do hope that you, uh, if you did, you liked this video, and share it with a friend. I think there's a lot of people that can use this information, and I think there's a lot of people that uh, will, will benefit from this video if you spread it around. So I appreciate it if you do, and as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home, let me know in the comments box below if you use perlite, vermiculite, or both, and the applications you use them for. And we'll talk to you all on the next episode. All right, grow big or go home, everyone. Bye.